If you do a shoot with multiple cameras, you know it could be kind of tricky to edit that shoot. You need to put all the clips on various tracks, and then the clip on the top track covers up the clips below it, so it's hard to know when to make your edits. But Premiere Pro has this great feature, a multi-cam feature, that makes that process go very smoothly. And the multi-cam feature inside the latest version of Premiere has several new attributes that really improve the process even more. So I'm going to explain all of that in this lesson, plus show you a couple of editing tricks to go along with that. We're going to be working with assets provided by Adobe for demonstration purposes only, so there's no project file for this lesson. I'm going to start by initiating the process to create a multi-cam sequence, then I'm going to back out of it for a second and then go back to it a little bit later. So let's select four files here. This one here, controller command click on this and down here, this next one, and even on this audio, which is something new to the latest version of Premiere, you can use audio inside a multi-cam sequence. I'm going to right click on this and say create multi-camera source sequence. Now the source sequence is kind of an important characterization. You view your sequence inside the source monitor. To work on it, you need to nest it in another sequence. So we'll get to that in a moment. The thing I want to point out here is the synchronize point. There are various ways to synchronize your clips. You can pre-trim them, so the in points line up or the out points line up, or you can have time code that matches up, which very few people can have because you might be working with multiple kinds of cameras. So the most logical thing you would do would be to do in points and out points. But you can also use clip markers, which I'm going to show you in a second. And now, in the latest version of Premiere, you can line things up using audio waveforms, which is such an easy way to do things. So that's probably going to be your default way of doing things. But I'm going to back out of this for a second and show you clip markers. They're not active right now because not all four clips have markers on them. Go back here. Now I'm going to take these four clips and open them up inside the source monitor there. Here's the audio clip. Let's take a look at a video clip first, though. There's no marker here. I'm going to go find a place to make a marker. We have an obvious place here because we have this production assistant doing a clapper here, kind of a human clapper, like right there. So we'll use that as our marked point right there. So I'll click on the marker. It adds that marker there. Let's go down to the audio. The other two ones already have markers on them. Here's where she claps. It's pretty easy to see it. We'll go over there and line that up and get the marker there as well. So now with the markers on all four of those, if I go back here and right click on it and say, create multi-camera source sequence, now that option is available. Except we're not gonna use it. What we're going to use is audio because audio is so simple. Audio looks for waveforms and lines them up. So your clips have to have some sort of a distinctive waveform in them. They can't just be a hum or something like that. But here the waveform is really obvious. So I'm gonna click on that radio button. I'm gonna give it a different name. You can choose names based on the clip names, audio or video or custom. I'll just call this multi-cam here like so. And we'll go down here to move source clips to processed clips bin. I'm not really going to do this. What this does is it creates a folder down here with these clips inside the folder, just kind of an organizational thing. We'll skip that. And now we're going to talk about the sequence settings. I'm going to use all the cameras to create the sequence. I'm going to use the audio channel set to automatic because we've got mono here and stereo here, so it makes it much easier to choose automatic. So now I click OK. And it's going to create a multi-camera source sequence right there. To see it, I can just double click on it, and there it is up here. You see just one clip when there should be three, right, plus audio? You need to go in a little ways until they start showing up because they were aligned based upon the audio, remember? Let's see if they clap up properly here. Bam, right there, they all line up, so that's good. And that wasn't by the markers, that was by the audio waveforms. How slick is that? Okay, so now actually edit this thing. We don't edit it here. We edit it over here in the program monitor and down in the timeline. So I need to nest this in a sequence to do that. So I've already got a sequence set up here. And if I drag this over now, it's going to show all of the various clips because I've got this button turned off. I've got this on the default value here. I've got the insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips set to the default value, which means it nests it as individual clips, which we don't want. It won't work if we nest it as an individual clip setting. So I'll try this, so I'll show it to you. There are all the individual clips. I get this little message too. So that's not what we want. It won't work this way. It won't work as a multi-cam sequence that way. So I'll undo that with Controller Command Z. I'll hit this little button to make it to the non-default setting, the nested sequence setting. And now I'll drag it over, and you'll see we have one video track now with all the audio tracks there. These audio tracks have a lot of noise on them from the wind and stuff. But the top one is the actual audio track, so I'll solo that one so it's not quite as noisy. A little bit of noise, but not too bad. And now we want to start editing it. Now the first order of business, we can actually trim away all the stuff at the beginning that we don't need. Let's say right to this point. I can just use the ripple edit tool here. Just trim away the beginning. And that trims all of the clips to that point. Now you can see it'll line up here like that. And now I need to switch this view to the multi-camera view. In previous versions of Premiere was actually a separate window, but now it appears inside the program monitor. 
To do that, I need to go to the Program Monitors panel menu, and the panel menu is up here in the upper hand corner there. Go down below the Composite Video default setting, go down to Multi-Camera there, click that on, and there it is. It looks like the Source Monitor with this extra Program Monitor over here. To edit it, I just need to click on these guys as I play it, or I can click on them after I move the playhead a little bit to some other place. That's a couple of different ways to do your editing. So I'll just play this for a while and make some switches here. Go forward a little bit farther where he starts talking. This is an incredibly fun shoot. We're on the island of Kauai, first of all. But we're shooting all of the demo assets for Adobe. So I'm just clicking on this with the mouse. You can use keyboard shortcuts too. But we'll stick with the mouse here. It's very simple. And notice that when I stop playing, we get these cut edits here. Now we're not stuck with the cut edits. We can go back and fix them. You can fix them using typical editing tools. So I'll go back here a bit. Got that long shot there at the beginning of him standing there. But I think I want a different shot there at the beginning. We'll take this little shot. We're going to replace this one with that one just by clicking on it. That replaces it. If I want to move the edit point, I can use the rolling edit tool to do that, for example. So let's just move this guy over there and drag it over like that. If I want to cut the edit there and put a different clip on that side or this side, I can do that using the eraser tool. Just click there. Now the left and the right side are the same. If I go over here, for example, I can change that to this clip, for example. And now we've got those three different shots there, from there to there to there. So that's fairly straightforward to edit things. If I want to fix the fact that this little clip is pretty small, if I go over to the point where we see that one right there, I want to make it full frame. I just need to go back to the original multicam source sequence. So to do that, I use the selection tool, press V for the selection tool, and control or command double click here, and that opens up the source sequence like so, the separate sequence called multicam. I need to view this now back in the composite monitor. So I'll go over here, composite video. Let's just take a look at this. Click away because we're all selected here. Turn off the visibility of that one. And there's the clip right there. It's the second one down right there. Just right click on it, say scale the frame size. Then scale back on now. Go back to the final sequence where it is. Now you see that is now full frame. So you can do that. You don't have to just stick with whatever you started with. You can change it. I see that this one here might be a little on the green side. I can go back and I can fix that as well. Go to multicam there. That's the one that looks a little green. I can add, let's say, an effect to that. So I go to effects, go to video effects, go on the color correction, and we'll add fast color corrector to that one. Take a look at the fast color corrector. We'll pull it away from the green just to show you how that works real briefly. We'll make it a little bit warmer. You can see the difference showing up there. Let's turn on the visibility to these guys again. Go back to the final sequence, and you'll see that he's now been warmed up. So you can make changes back on the original multicam sequence, and they show up now in this sequence as you build it. Also notice that this shot back here was really bouncing around a lot. And now I could go back to that one as well. And you'd think that I could just apply, let's say, the warp stabilizer to that clip there, but it won't work because it needs to match the sequence size. So to do that, you just need to do it on, let's say, a clip inside a nested sequence like this. But you can build a multicam sequence not only with video clips and audio clips, but you can also build it with nested sequences. So that's pretty slick. So here in this particular one, I stabilized this using the warp stabilizer. I can make a multi-cam sequence out of that, along with the three other clips, and now it'll be stabilized and also full frame. So there are all kinds of elements you can put into a multi-camera sequence. It's fairly easy to edit it on the fly and then do some fixes after the fact, and you can also apply effects to those clips and have them show up inside your finished multi-cam project.